Hey Math 350 students, um, it is the weekend and uh, I enjoy talking about math anytime. Uh, and I thought I might uh, go over a couple of notes that I didn't have a chance to get to in our regular class this week. Uh, just so we stay on schedule, uh, we do have a midterm coming up in just a little over a week and I thought it'd be good to get this material to you sooner. Uh, that'll give us more time in class to do some other things. And I'll try and keep this video kind of short. It really covers uh, just one main topic and a couple of important little results uh, from section 2.3 of our book. Okay, and the main topic I want to talk about first here is just the density concept. Uh, the concept of a set being dense. And in particular, we're going to see that Q, the rational numbers, are dense within the real numbers. And uh, this is going to be an important fact. We're going to almost use it implicitly over and over and over again throughout uh, the rest of the semester. So, but for now, I just want to try and do it somewhat precisely. So this will just be a quick, uh, quick little mini lecture that you can enjoy uh, at your own pace, and you can rewind me as much as you need to in order to make sure you understand uh, what's what's going up here on the board. So let me uh, explain what it means for a set to be dense. Okay. So um, we're only talking about subsets of the real numbers. So suppose that A is a subset of R. We say that A is dense in R if between any two between any two real numbers so if I take any two real numbers at all um, well any two distinct real numbers of course so if I take two distinct real numbers uh, there exists there exists an element of capital A. All right, pretty simple. So between any two real numbers, there would have to be an element of A. So uh, to phrase that a little bit more mathematically, uh, this is really just saying that anytime you take an x less than y in the real numbers, so for all x less than y in R, if we take the interval from x to y and we intersect it with A, it should be non-empty. Okay? There should exist some element of A that is between X and Y. Okay? Uh, pretty natural definition. So between any two real numbers, you can find an element of that set. And that is something that is true about Q. So theorem 2.2, Q is dense in R. Okay? Between any two real numbers, we can always find a, a rational number. Okay, I'm going to prove this in just a minute, but the proof actually relies on another result, which is also extremely important, something called the Archimedean Principle. So I'm going to state this here, the Archimedean Principle. Okay, so what does that say? The Archimedean Principle just says, and I'm going to phrase this a little bit stronger than what it actually says in our book, but if we take two real numbers, x and y, and let's assume that x is greater than 0, okay, then there exists, there exists a natural number n such that, there exists a natural number n such that n times x is greater than y, okay? Kind of makes sense, right? Um, x is positive, and if you multiply it by a sufficiently large natural number, n times x can be as big as you need it to be. So you can make it larger than y uh, if, you, if you so desire. Okay, so let me um, prove this Archimedean principle, and then we'll come back to the density concept in, in just a minute. So I've got the statement of, of the principle down here. Uh, and now I'm going to do the proof right here, okay? It's a pretty short proof, okay? We're going to do this um, by way of contradiction. This is a little bit differently than how the book does it. The book kind of goes back and relies on a bunch of um, older results and exercises throughout the, the text, so I wanted to do something here that would just be totally self-contained, okay? 
So let's suppose that we have, by way of contradiction, let's assume that we do have, in fact, uh, x and y in the real numbers, and x is greater than 0. Okay, but let us suppose that, let's also assume then, the contradiction would be to assume that for all natural numbers n, n times x is less than or equal to y, right? Okay, so suppose that there is no n, no natural number n, such that nx is greater than y. Suppose that nx is always less than or equal to y, okay? So then if I form this set, I'm going to form a set capital A here, which is just the multiples n times x, where n is a natural number. That set is bounded above by y, right? Okay? So y is an upper bound. Okay? Now once we have an upper bound, then by the, uh, oh, so it's bounded above, so then by the completeness axiom, there will have to exist a least upper bound, okay? So by the completeness axiom, by the completeness axiom, there exists an alpha, which by definition is the supremum of this set, which is some real number, okay? So there's a least upper bound for that set. Okay, so then if we look at alpha minus x, well, x was positive, right? So alpha minus x is smaller than alpha. And alpha was the least upper bound of capital A. So if this is smaller than alpha, then this cannot be an upper bound for A. This cannot be, it's too small. Alpha was the least upper bound for A, so alpha minus x is not going to be an upper bound for A. Oh, well that just means that there's some element of A that is larger than alpha minus x, okay? So there exists an M in the natural numbers with um, alpha minus x less than M times x. So there's some element of capital A that is larger than alpha minus x. Okay, well then alpha would be less than x times m plus 1, if I just rearrange the equation. Okay, alpha is less than x times m plus 1, but this is another element of capital A again, right? This is also an element of capital A. That's a contradiction because alpha was supposed to be an upper bound for capital A. It was supposed to be greater than or equal to everything in capital A. I found something in capital A now that alpha is smaller than. So that's a contradiction to alpha being a, uh, an upper bound of capital A. Okay, so there's the proof. Very, very short proof of this Archimedean principle here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use the Archimedean principle to prove that the rational numbers are dense in the real numbers. So I'm just going to erase this uh, proof here. You can always rewind uh, the video or pause it if you need a little bit more time to soak that up. But now I'm just going to prove uh, proof that Q is dense in R proof that Q is dense in R. Remember what that means again, just to remind you of the definition, just means between any two real numbers there has to be a rational number. So let's take any two real numbers, so assume that X is less than Y in the real numbers, and we have to create a rational number in between X and Y. Okay. Now the first thing I want to note is that y minus x is greater than 0, okay? So we can actually apply the Archimedean principle with y minus x playing the role of x down here, okay? So by the Archimedean principle, which is still on the board here, okay, there exists a natural number n such that n 
times y minus x is greater than anything we want to put down. Okay, so the role of the y can be played by any number that we want. I'm going to use the number 1. Okay, I'm going to use the number 1 here. Okay, um, so we have that. Now let's find an integer m with the following property. Um, m minus 1 is less than or equal to nx is less than m. So what is going on here? nx is some number. Right? nx is some number, and it will be sandwiched between two consecutive integers somewhere. So there has to be an m somewhere such that nx is between these two integers, m minus 1 and m. Okay? I'm now going to take these two equations and put them together to create a rational number that's between x and y. So how am I going to do that? Well, note that we have nx less than m. We already said that here. Okay. And m is less than or equal to nx plus 1. Okay. And if you look at nx plus 1 from the top inequality, nx plus 1, if you rearrange it, is actually less than ny. Okay. So if you take that, and now you just, uh, we're going to kind of ignore this one now at this point, this term, and just divide through by n everywhere. Of course, we can do that because n is a natural number. It's not 0. So there you go. We have a rational number in between x and y. Isn't that clever? <laughs> so that is, uh, that is how it works to show that q is dense in r. Okay, nice, nice little proof. One last little thing, kind of as an example, and then we'll, uh, we'll call it good. Um, remember that I mentioned uh, in class that if we take s to be the set of rational numbers such that q squared is less than 2, I made the statement there that the supremum of that set is just the square root of 2. Okay, the supremum of s is just the square root of 2, uh, which is, of course, not rational. Um, I just want to make a quick little proof of that. Okay, let's prove that the supremum of this set is indeed the square root of 2, and we're going to use the density of q to make that argument. Okay, well, I think it's fairly clear that the square root of 2 is an upper bound for s. An upper bound for s. That's part of what, okay, remember, to prove that something is a supremum of a set, it has to be an upper bound for that set. And then it has to be the least upper bound for that set, right? Um, everybody agree that any rational number q that's in this set has to be less than the square root of 2, right? Okay, so now we're going to try and prove that the square root of 2 is the least upper bound. So let's assume that gamma is an upper bound for s as well. So suppose s has another upper bound, which we're going to call gamma. Okay? Get rid of this part of the proof. We'll go back up to the top here. So assume that gamma is an upper bound. Okay, and let's suppose, um, by way of contradiction, suppose that gamma somehow is smaller than what we are hoping the supremum is. The supremum is supposed to be the square root of 2, which would make it the least upper bound. So suppose we have a smaller upper bound. Okay, we're going to do this by way of contradiction. Okay, uh, since Q is dense in R, since Q is dense in R, there exists a rational number, let's call it Q naught in the rationals, uh, such that um, gamma is less than q naught is less than the square root of 2. Okay, so squeeze a rational number between these two real numbers. All right. Um, now, q naught um, q naught squared, look at this, q naught squared is less than 2, right, which means that q naught is actually in s. 
Okay, so we have an element of S that gamma is smaller than. So this gamma then is not an upper bound for S. And that's the contradiction. We have a little contradiction there. Okay? Great. So the least upper bound for S is indeed uh, the square root of 2. So the supremum of S is the square root of 2, which is not an element of the set S itself. In fact, it's not an element of even, it's not an element of Q at all. So, Okay, so that's just a nice little example to follow up what I had said in class that uses the uh, fact that Q is dense a little bit. I uh, hope this makes sense. The main things I want you to get out of this little video are the definition of density, the fact that Q is indeed dense in R, and the Archimedean principle. Uh, that's one that we're going to be using uh, multiple times as we go forward, so it's good to, good to have that one in mind as well. Hope this all makes sense. If not, uh, be sure to come ask me, and uh, I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks.